The governor is shown to be a cunning, manipulative, cruel, callous, savage, brutal, sociopathic, megalomaniacal, and highly intelligent man who is a determined survivor and a strong leader to those in his group. According to producer Galen Hurd, the governor is extremely delusional and believes that he is almost a messiah and destined to be a leader. He is prone to fits of psychotic rage, and this combined with his utter lack of mercy make him a dangerous person and physical opponent. In season three, the governor put on a fade of congeniality and was initially introduced as being a kind, generous person dedicated to keeping his community safe. In reality, however, he is gradually revealed to be a volatile, depraved and unpredictable psychopath, very capable of cold-blooded murder, and is also a smooth talker. He was also highly manipulative, and thought nothing of using others and coercing them into doing his bidding. The governor was also completely obsessed with protecting the people he cared about, and he attempts to accomplish this by taking charge of the group, and doing what was necessary for their survival, which mainly included killing anyone who was a potential threat to them without hesitation. He also had dark secrets, such as keeping his zombified daughter in a closet and having fish tanks filled with walker and human heads. He claimed that he kept the tanks full of heads to harden himself. Despite this, the governor did not care if his victims came back as walkers and overall took pleasure in removing anyone whom he perceived as being a threat to him and his group. Despite his psychopathic nature, he truly loved his daughter Penny and protected her strongly during the apocalypse and was utterly devastated by her death to an extent so great that he refused to put her zombified corpse down and was even more devastated when she was put down by Mick and Hawthorne. Throughout season three, he gradually became a much more cold-hearted and barbaric person and his darker personality was fully exacerbated following Mickeny's killing of his zombified daughter, thus triggering severe homicidal desires within him. From then on, he lost most of his sanity and only desired to be on a warpath. The governor's desire to destroy Rick's group was so strong that he slaughtered almost every member of the Woodbury army when they refused to aid him in his quest. In season four, after being abandoned and wandering alone for months following the fall of Woodbury, the governor adopted a makeshift family that he found whilst wandering and retains much of his old self. However, he lied to them, keeping his past and his violent nature a secret, while convincing himself that he is doing this to protect them, which is true. According to his actor David Morrissey, the governor was genuinely conflicted inside about protecting those he cares about with violence and barbarism, and was constantly fighting himself in a Jekyll and Hyde manner. This internal conflict makes him almost a tragic character, however, this battle with himself ultimately proved to be fruitless, as he quickly returned to his old actions to protect his new family and new group by killing Martinez and later Pete Dolgen to re-establish his position as a leader and attempting to take the prison from Rick's group by holding Herschel Green. He dies a disgraced, cold-blooded, remorseless, and sadistic mass murderer, and is put down by one of the very people he swore to protect yet failed to.